So I'm just inviting you to, to ask you <coughs> why get this information? You know, why get information at all? I know I, I try and say it at the beginning of every class, and it's actually a really nice practice to do it daily. Waking up and going the activities of today, why am I doing that really? Because there is so much choice, especially <coughs> in New York to do so many things and then um, to have a go up the discipline to know what to do, what to what to do, take I make <laughs> for those of you who went to the You know we can get into we, we we are built to get into habits. So we can get into a habit of attending these things in a certain way. And we get into the habit of relating to ourselves in a certain way. I'm this kind of person. I'm that kind of person. And that flies in the face of the possibility of complete and utter transformation to a point of enlightenment. Forget getting happy. To the point of you're a nirvana. Really free from suffering. Free from the conditions of suffering. Free from the perceptions. Free from free of the softness of suffering. If these things are true, then give me the elixir. You know, like give me the thing that I have to drink to turn that on, if it's true. If I'm doubtful if it's true or not, for me at least, was it worth investigating? Is it worth investigating? I know for me the answer is absolutely. You know, until the worms eat the flesh. For others, you know, how does it feel to connect with the idea that you could transcend the normality of existence that we're, we're doing daily and we have done for decades and hundreds of years on the planet as creatures together? So again, I, I was thinking about it coming here I saw myself doing the same old. Why do this? Really? You know, really, really. Why do so many things? So, I'm going to invite you to check that motivation before we start any Tibetan Buddhist philosophical thing. We try and generate the highest mind, offer the most perfect universe, and in that there is something. And then we do this thing called taking refuge, where you recognize the potentiality, the infinite <coughs> potential in everything. That I take refuge and things can change, really, including my self-conception. So I invite you to do those with me. Uh, how do you want to try? <coughs> <coughs> Sangeet 
Just allow the awareness of your body and mind to be in the room that we are in, in the building that we are in, and let it scan the place mentally, scan your body in its location, and just relax into the space we're going to be in for a few minutes. Release any tension from any parts of your body that are holding tension, particularly your face, your shoulders, your brow. And begin to focus your attention on the sensation of your breath. You can just feel your body rising falling with each breath. You can feel the sensation of the air through your nostrils. You can visualize the color of the air blue in your lungs and out blue floating into the space in front of you and then back in. not to control it, but look for the magic in this thing called breath. See if you can suspend your awareness in the time that it stops exhaling and begins inhaling and vice versa. Just wonder at the magic that is breathing. See if you've never seen it or felt it before. Observe it for the first time. Whatever your motivation was when we talked about it earlier, reconnect with that and just allow yourself a vacation from the normal way of looking at life. Allow yourself the next five minutes to be free from all your troubles and your thoughts, your patterns. You are completely free of those. They are outside of you now. They are suspended for five minutes. See if you can give yourself five minutes vacation from the usual way of living life in terms If you're really attached to those things, they'll be waiting for you when you finish, so there's no need to connect with them. It's your time. Now I invite you to think of the most holy being you can imagine, real or imaginary, it doesn't matter, a personification of the most perfected being. As soon as you conceive of them, they appear in front of you. See if you can get lost in watching them. See if you can see a radiance from their physical form, or if you're feeling them, the gravity in front of you of their presence.
just relaxing to the sensation of being together with them, facing each other, you and them. If you can catch their eyes and their smile, they are in bliss, completely happy. Regardless of what's happening inside of you, they are unmoved in peace. Filled with love for you. As you are right now. Imagine that you can get a glimpse of their mind, how they perceive the world, just for a second. You feel and see the world through their eyes, completely at peace, filled with love. Experiencing wisdom. ultimate form. And as you hold them there in front of you, return to your breath. Just the awareness of the moving in now. And begin to Fill your body with every inhalation with tiny diamond particles that are coming and emanating from that body being. Every inhalation of yours fills the inside of your body with tiny, glistening, diamond-like lights that capture any negativity in your system, your mind or your body. If you have a sore part of your body, like the back or something, see the lights gathering there and collecting any negativity and on every exhale they get pushed into the ground consumed by a great fire down there. Every inhalation, brightness from the light being, filling your body, collecting any negativity every exhalation, pushing it down into the ground until your body is completely free from any ailments. In your mind, every emotion, every pattern, every sadness, any longing, all of it removed. Once you feel you've been completely emptied of any afflictions, imagine the inside of your body as sky blue, as vast as the blue sky. No edges, no end. Completely infinite inside. In the center at your heart, you feel a radiance, a kind of love. you send out rays of light to every being that you think of that needs it on this planet. Begin with the people that you love most, your parents, your siblings, your lovers, your children. Just spontaneously filling them with light, holding that love, the 
it's in your heart. Grow the web of light to people that you are friends with, people that you work with. And let it be intensified like the network of the planet. The more you share, the bigger it gets, the more you can share. And try and imagine that as it touches those people, they are in fact surprised with a feeling of ease and love. If they are lonely, they find friendship. If they are hungry, they find food. If they are angry, they find peace. Now see if you can gather some more strength in your heart and connect with the web of hearts in this room with the other people that you've landed here with today. Imagining their networks, their broad, vast nets of light going across this planet. Imagining their mothers, their sisters and brothers. being happy that there's happiness there. And then ask the enlightened being to please stay and to please teach you and observe and rise and turn the same direction you're facing. The light returns into your heart as the teacher sits at the crown of your head, getting smaller and smaller on top. It's just a feeling of them there. When you're ready, you can return to the So, uh, we're talking denier. I'll do a quick review, but I think I have a little video I want to show you first. The word denier, remember, was about it was discipline, make it detangle, wild horse. It was used in that context. So, I thought I'd find on YouTube what happens when you tangle wild horse. And I found a whole bunch of wild horses biting and biting each other. I thought I'm getting too much into this metaphor, but it was really interesting. <laughs> I thought I would show you those videos. Um, it really is, if you, do, if you know your mind at all, if you've been watching your mind, it's pretty unpredictable. <laughs> you think you're going to be happy for a little day or something, and then stuff happens and you react. You know, I did, I did that, I don't know how many times today, internally, and at least once externally. You know. I, was, um, I was a little ashamed. Because here I am studying about controlling your mind, and like, piss off. You know, <laughs> which wasn't very nice. But then uh, I've also had moments where <coughs> you, you ride your mind because of habit, because of knowing it intimately. You have this relationship with your mind where you can really sense the times that you've taken it, and those times are magnificent. So a friend of ours put this up on Facebook, which is a program on the internet. <laughs> and I thought you'd like it. For those of you who speak Spanish, enjoy it. For those of you that don't, he's saying really beautiful things. <laughs> <laughs> this is um, a pre-Columbian taming of horses in Argentina without hurting, without castigar. Um, Punishing. 
So it's using communication and gentleness to change. They were called whispers. It's a bird scene. It's <laughs> bad. Avoiding pain, the tamer encourages the relationship with the horse to to act on future activities. Is what he said, which is what the future will 